Hello and welcome to Midway Garage. In today's video, we're going to take off this standard fan shroud and put on this doghouse fan shroud. It actually is really great, helps the cooling. It's a great video, stay tuned, there's a bonus bit at the end. So we start removing the coil from the fan shroud. So essentially what I'm trying to do is take off all the accessories off the fan shroud. Now here we take off the generator. Loosen the bolt and then uh, take off the belt. So the nice thing is that belt will, uh, I won't necessarily throw it away, I'll use it as a spare. We'll put a new belt on at the end of the video. Now this is the generator bracket strap. It essentially straps the generator to the, to the block, really. So now there's two 10 millimeter bolts that are on the side of the fan shroud. This is what essentially holds it into place. Now I need to disconnect the throttle cable. Pull it out the back. And then there's a little tube that the throttle cable goes through. I, and it's very common you'll find this. I ended up using a clamp to hold it onto the back to keep it from sliding. Now you don't need to pull it all the way out. In fact, you just need to get enough clearance to pull the fan shroud off. And with the fan shroud off, you can see the old oil cooler. Now I remove the engine tin to get access to the two, to the two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the oil cooler on. And here you can see I've removed the bolts and uh, there it is. Now there's two grommet or uh, gaskets that go in. Now, I apologize for this. I actually didn't record it, so... What you need to do when you put the uh, new oil cooler in, you'll see that it's slightly offset. And it's held in by a bracket. And there's a procedure where you have to enlarge the holes that hold the bracket into place. The original oil cooler had six millimeter bolts, essentially, or six millimeter studs holding it in place and the new one has eight millimeter studs. So you have to get a drill and slightly enlarge the holes. With that done, we put the uh, new fan shroud in. And you can see the back of the fan shroud has this ductwork. It'll force air through the new oil cooler. And the important thing is it keeps it out of the cylinder. These uh, little screws are often hard to get. So what I'm doing here is I'm loosening up the engine tin so that I can get the uh, fan shroud in a little better. So with that done, the 10 millimeter bolts go back in place. And we basically just start, you know, in the reverse order, start tightening up all the screws around the engine.
So with the dockhouse fan shroud secured on the engine 10, we now put the clamp back on the generator, tighten it down. So now we have the rear side of the engine 10. This piece here that I'm holding goes up against the firewall. Now I had to figure out what order to put this in. There's a vent that's on my left, on your right essentially, that uh, channels the hot air out the back into the engine compartment. And you'll see that it actually has to be put in the tin first. This little vent's held onto the engine tin by one screw. And then this other vent channels the air into that. It's held on by another screw. So this is something uh, that we have to, to do. The fan belt's held on by, obviously, this pulley system, and it uses these spacers to make sure you get the tightness correct. So it's kind of an interesting setup. On a Volkswagen, you use these spacers to determine how tight the pulley system is. So essentially what you have to do is you have to take a guess or you know put in how many you had before, take the pulley off and then put spacers in and kind of repeat the process until you get it correct. And it's running. Not too bad. I like the color on the engine shroud a little better. I originally did sort of a hammered gray, but this black is a little more stock. So I've always wanted to do this. It's kind of one of those things. So a Volkswagen, the pan will run independently with the body off. That's why so many people use it for making kit cars. Essentially, if I had the steering wheel hooked up with some sort of a brace, it, I could drive it down the road. It, it's perfectly functional just on its own. So what I'm doing here is I'm testing the clutch, the brakes, to make sure everything functions before I put the body back on. So we got the doghouse fan on, and as you can see in the video, it ran really great, but I wanted to give you a sort of a bonus video here. It's really been a while since um, we've, we've looked at the back of the car or the pan, and there's actually quite a bit of work that's been done. You can see here I got the fuel line hooked up. I uh, correctly angled the transaxle boots. I ended up, you might notice, I ended up replacing the brake line and I wanted to make sure I had enough room around the pedals here, so I ended up uh, ordering a new one and replacing that. 
The other thing we did is I replaced the shift bushing here. That was completely shot. It was a fun thing. This bolt was actually seized in there, so it was a long project. Got the throttle in. Um, this was kind of funny. This is a, a clutch adjustment nut, the, the ones you buy nowadays. The problem is the ones that come on this year are basically just a nut with that sort of indentation in it. And these don't really fit these older arms, these older clutch arms, because they're curved inwards. The, the newer ones sort of come up straight, so the, the nut sits right here. But the older ones have a curve in it, and it lines up with a line, so I couldn't change it. But I managed to get this one off of my old cable, so that worked out all right. Got the correct fuel pump on here. I'm not sure if you caught that in the video. Got a new muffler on it. Got the exhaust system hooked up. That's all right. The big news is I got the disc brakes put on, and these look great. Um, <laughs> the other thing I had to do was replace the King and Link pin housing here that holds the wheel on. Um, I actually had to take it into a shop and had it worked on there. You can see they ended up putting these grease certs in at a weird angle, so I'll have to replace those. You can see they have them on this side correct, but I'm assuming they must have ran out. But yeah, it's got the disc brakes on it. That looks good. One episode I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up these wheels probably down the road a little bit. You can see I've got the heater channels bolted on. I wanted to make sure they fit, get the rubber seal on, and then we'll slide it under the car, get it tack welded in, and then finish welding on that. Um, yeah, I just wanted to give you an update. Um, I think it turned out pretty good. Thanks for watching, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video.